You know, it's, it's amazing how you can come up with ways of improving your shots. You know, uh, one of the more interesting shots I, I, I think of is the vertigo shot. It was something that Alfred Hitchcock came up with. Uh, you can put your camera on a dolly, you know, and the dolly will allow you to move or truck back and forth with the camera. And there's this trick where you uh, move the camera toward the center of interest while you're zooming the opposite direction. And so your person that you're looking at or your center of interest is looking the same all the time, but the background behind them is just getting larger and larger and larger. It's a very weird effect. And it was called a dolly zoom shot, and it was something that Alfred Hitchcock used. Vertigo, and that's the first time that anyone ever really noticed that. But the neat thing about it is, you know, you want to be able to move your camera. So you can put your camera on a dolly. You can take your tripod and put it on skates where you can roll around your tripod. You can put your camera on a dolly. You can use a jib, you know, with a large boom arm where you can move the camera, uh, you know, up, up higher and bring it in. And nowadays, you know, we're using these new cameras, these GoPro cameras, and GoPro cameras don't have hardly any lens at all. They just have a very simple lens, and it's just a, a one camera takes a very wide shot, and you can get shooting 4K. And then you can do something called uh, multi, uh, virtual multi camera when shooting in 4K. And so you just shoot the whole area, and then you you take in posts and you uh, actually cut to different shots within that area using virtual multi camera using a GoPro or other 4K camera in post because you're doing a real wide shot and you can just take sections of that wide shot and use it as, a, as if you were using multiple cameras. GoPros are incredible cameras. You can get them from 299 up. The original uh, or the inexpensive white GoPro only shoots in HD 1080p and even so it's a great little camera for uh, wide shots or for you know if you're putting it on your head with uh, like some sort of cap or something and running around and getting all kinds of shots from places you could normally get with a regular camera and you work your all your way all the way up to a 4k GoPro that's uh, like uh, 399 or 499 now depends on where you buy it uh, you can use that for oh so many things but um, one of the bigger things about GoPro is uh, if you happen to get a quadcopter, the most common quadcopter you can use now is a DJI uh, quadcopter, and, uh, and you get a Zen Muse gimbal, and, uh, and you can put your, your GoPro camera on the gimbal underneath the quadcopter and you can fly the quadcopter and get aerial shots with your GoPro, which are absolutely fantastic. Of course, I recommend using a gimbal. If you have one of the situations where the camera is connected directly to the quadcopter, there's a lot of flutter and, and problems, and you can't um, pan, or you can't tilt your camera. You do the panning with the quadcopter, but you can't tilt it unless you have a, a gimbal, a remote control gimbal. Um, the thing about learning to fly a quadcopter is really difficult. Uh, the DJI, you know, the instructions are terrible for the DJI quadcopter. And uh, you, so you have to actually go to their website and watch their instructions about how to use your quadcopter. Uh, and in the learning process, you're probably going to break you like, you know, two sets of blades. And don't put the, don't put the, the gimbal on the, cam, on the quadcopter until you've learned to fly the quadcopter, you'll probably break your gimbal. Uh, Zenmuse gimbal is a great gimbal, but it's easily broken. And so you want to learn to fly your, your quadcopter at first, then put your gimbal on it. And uh, another thing is a, is a, a viewer, first-person viewer, that you can add to your quadcopter that will allow you to uh, watch the uh, video of your camera. Uh, lots of people buy the GoPro thinking, well, you know, I can, I can, I can use the uh, Wi-Fi setting on my GoPro and I can hook it up to my uh, iPad and I can watch the GoPro anywhere in the local area using the Wi-Fi and so I can use my 
iPad to control the GoPro, which is a wonderful thing, until you go to put it on a quadcopter, because the quadcopter uses the same frequencies as the GoPro. So if you turn on the GoPro Wi-Fi, it will keep the quadcopter from working, or it will make the quadcopter where it's erratic and wants to crash all the time. So what you have to do in this situation is you have to turn off the Wi-Fi on your GoPro so that the Wi-Fi from your remote control for your quadcopter will allow the uh, quadcopter to work. Then you get a, a, a first-person viewer, which is on a whole different frequency, to watch and record what the GoPro. Well, the GoPro will record automatically if you tell it to. You just start recording when the quadcopter flies off. But learning to use the quadcopter takes time. You're going to have a lot of crashes, and uh, you may pick it up right away. But you know, before you put the camera on it, before you put the gimbal on it, learn to fly the quadcopter. Go way out into a field where you can't hit anything. Don't get it stuck in a tree because it's hard getting it out of a tree. You have to climb a tree. So just get get the learn how to run the quadcopter. And once you learn how to quad, run the quadcopter then stick your camera on it and once you do using a, a gopro on a quadcopter is an absolutely wonderful thing master the quadcopter first it doesn't have to be a dji there's a lot of other quadcopters that they have on the on the market which do great uh but the, it seems like the dji is is more used by videographers and people that want to use a gopro on a on a quadcopter still in all it's something that you have to really be careful with of course, you don't want to fly your quadcopter around any airport or any place that it might get anyone hurt or flying it around the freeway with cars and you don't want to crash your quadcopter into cars and cause a wreck and so forth. But once you master the quadcopter and uh, put your, your GoPro on it, you can really do amazing things. It's fantastic. But let me tell you, the learning curve for your, GoPro, for your quadcopter is going to take a while and don't expect to have any good instructions when you get your quadcopter because I mean with the DJI it's a it's a great product easily breakable uh, and the instruction set is horrific um, I don't know who wrote the instructions or if they had anyone ever read the instructions but they certainly don't work with uh, the camera and so you get a DJI which is a great quadcopter go watch their videos on their website and, and and just sort of give a light reading to the instructions because it's going to lead you the wrong direction, especially when it comes to setting up the um, the um, the compass on it. You have to do a compass setting, and and the instructions on the compass setting will have you fiddling with that uh, quadcopter all day because it asks you to do something that it will not do, and so you're doing it over and over again thinking it's not working when it actually did work, but the instructions were wrong. And, and basically that instruction flaw, flaw with the DJI quadcopter is, it has uh, lights on it, and the lights change color to indicate that um, you've fulfilled a part of the alignment. And then at the end of the alignment it says, uh, you know, you, you turn it one direction, and the light changes color, and then you turn it another direction, and it says, and the lights turn off. Well, the lights never turn off. And so you follow the instructions, you're spinning the quadcopter with your hand like this for a long time, waiting for the lights to turn off and the lights will never turn off. And uh, so you're just wasting your time when the actual uh, instruction should be, the red light stops blinking and you'll have a blinking yellow, but you won't have red. And so that's when you finish that alignment, but the instructions would have you fiddling with it all day long because you think you never got done okay and so that's a wonderful thing there with that